I'm Nick Casey. I'm the governor's chief of staff. And we'll have the governor out here in just a little bit. But, you know, this is, a, uh, is an interesting day. It's 100 days since the governor has uh, been sworn in, and we've got some things we'd like to just reflect on with you all. And just so you know, it's the day before the governor's birthday, so tomorrow is his birthday. As you know, this is also the last day in which bills can be signed or vetoed. And so there's quite a task before the governor as we go into this evening as we continue to work on the bills and going through them both from a technical perspective and also a policy perspective. So we'll have more for you all on those bills as we get a little later into the evening. But we really want to just kind of give you some idea. The governor's got about, uh, if my math is right, about 1,200 days to go. And uh, we want to see what we did in 100 days. And so just to give you some perspective, uh, like we say, when the, when, the governor, when the governor came into office, uh, he did inherit a substantial problem. We had a deficit that we were facing not only this year when the governor was sworn in, but we're facing in next year as we look forward to, uh, at least at that time, a projected nearly $500 million hole in the budget. So it was kind of a daunting circumstance as we came into. But uh, as you know, the governor has worked very diligently through this legislative session for one of the most important things that we face, which is a balanced budget for not just the upcoming year, but maybe more importantly for his entire term, it's what's the plan? I'm an old CPA. Any old CPA can balance a budget. You either cut or you add revenue. But what's the plan once you get past the cuts and the addition of the revenue? And the governor's plan has been very succinct. The governor is interested and required to, uh, as he's in his opinion, to, to advance the state of West Virginia, not just balance a budget. That's actually kind of a failure. What's important is to give us uh, opportunity and hope and success as we go through the rest of his uh, administration. But let's talk about a little bit about what we've done. We've kind of broken it down to give you some ideas where the governor spent his time in his first 100 days and on things that he could control and could do some things with. We proudly are into jobs. He has protected 1,700 jobs up at the, uh, the Greyhound Racing, primarily in the Ohio County area, Wheeling, West Virginia. We also, in that same area, protected 1,500 jobs at OVMC, Ohio Valley Medical Center. They were in great uh, concern that because of their financial situation, that if there weren't some changes, that they would have uh, a loss of those jobs. So we've worked well with that. We've, through our DEP, issued the certification for the EQT Mountain Valley Pipeline, which is an estimated to create 4,500 jobs on a much more smaller basis, but much just as importantly, we were able to recall foresters who had, because of budget cuts, been laid off. So they not only take care of our beautiful natural resources, but they aid our timber industry. So we're glad that they have been able to be brought in in the first 100 days of the governor's work. In that same regard on jobs, we've also proposed, still have to work it through the legislature, the Save Our State Fund. That Save Our State Fund is broad-based. The purpose of the fund is not only to, to let the folks out in the big world know what West Virginia is all about, but also to provide resources and tools so that our Economic Development Authority can bring in businesses and other enterprises that will hire West Virginians and, and keep them working. The governor paid a lot of attention to and was very successful, we think, on public education, K through 12. As you know, the governor had great concerns that we were last 50th in the country. We'd maintained our 50th position in public education, and he wanted to see changes made. Through the governor's efforts, we've been able to uh, have a significant change in the vision of the State Board of Education. Uh, there's a whole new host of folks that are on there that are now members of the State Board. We have a new state superintendent, and we think all those folks share the governor's vision that, that education in West Virginia is a community activity and that education in West Virginia can be successful uh, no matter what the size or, uh, of your county or the size of your schools are. He's eliminated some of the things that were impediment to education. He ended the ADF, A2F grading system of public schools as on a curve. So if all the schools were all the same, they'd all get C's. Our schools aren't C level, as the governor said. They, that's not a fair grading system, and they shouldn't be graded as such. Uh, he's worked with the uh, Reese's to uh, eliminate some unnecessary, as we say, bureaucratic constraints that are there and to restore much more control to the people that actually do the education and not, as he would say, the bureaucrats in, in Charleston area. We also are worked on, I think we're going to achieve this, a 2% pay raise for our teachers. We can't fill our classroom slots up with enough teachers, and one of the reasons is because we don't treat them as competitively financial as we should. 2% is not enough, but it's one of our starts. He's concerned about our infrastructure. You've heard all about the roads. 
you're going to hear about broadband. It's an opportunity now in West Virginia to, to take the recommendations of Broadband Council and through some legislation that has already been passed by the House and the Senate and is going to be dealt with by the governor here in a little bit. We're going to have a broadband program that is, is uh, wonderful. It's got great support around the entire state. And we're going to be real pleased to see that that broadband is not only going to be information for us, it's going to assist our schools, it's going to assist our job creation. Roads. We have been successful in the first step, not the last step, of building the roads. The Garvey bonds have been approved. If you all know, the Garvey bonds allows us to use federal highway funds to go out and build roads with. There's a number of roads on the, on the placard back there, which will be immediately affected by those Garvey bonds. So the Garvey bond money is ready, and we've got road builders who are willing, and we've got engineering from our Department of Highways that will get us launched in that regard. Again, that's just step one, but that step has been taken. We've also been able to extend our public-private partnerships on building roads. That allows third parties to come in and to actually contribute to roads that they may think they want to invest in in West Virginia. Uh, we've also done some work with the design build. What's design build and road work? It means you can build more roads faster, less expensively. And we're very pleased that those have already been achieved. We've got some more to go with the legislature, but that is the first step in a three-step process, and we're very, very confident that we're going to get those next two steps taken care of soon. Uh, it is no secret that the drug epidemic is killing the people of West Virginia. Over 700 people last year. One of our counties has very, very, been very, very hard hit. It's unfortunate. You see in the paper from time to time that some epidemic, somebody's brought in bad heroin or bad something, and, and dozens and dozens of people end up near death or in emergency rooms. So the governor has started to fight that. He's been successful in increasing the penalties for out-of-state drug dealers that come in here. He's also been uh, concerned that it's not just cutting down the supply, but how do we deal with the folks that have already been so badly impacted? We were able to get signed already the Second Chance Employment Act. That gives folks who have uh, had a run-in with the law, who have done their time, who have performed their uh, responsibilities after they've been convicted, to have a chance to go back out and to get their record in a position that they cannot be excluded forever from the employment world because they have a felony or some other conviction on their records. Um, he's also made, <laughs> he's also passed legislation that's come in to, uh, to assist in the drug treatment of additional beds throughout the state of West Virginia. There's two or three different locations that are being worked, actually there's three plus locations being worked up, and the funding for those is in part from the uh, settlements that came out of the pill mill legislation that gave to our DHHR and our DMAPs uh, some, some funds and some discretion to use on how those funds are sent, um, how those funds are spent to deal with rehabilitation of good West Virginians who have fought through their problems and now they need to, uh, now they need to have that opportunity to, to bring themselves back to, uh, to their families and the workforce. The also we've proposed, and we hope this will pass also, on our road work. You bid a road, you have the opportunity then to pay a, a fee for the successful bidder. And that 5% fee is, again, to be dedicated and used for rehabilitation purposes for people that uh, have suffered through that. We have, in that same regard, recognized that our physicians know what they're talking about when they say people need relief from different kinds of uh, pain and, and problems. And so the governor has passed and signed the Medical Cannabis Act. And we passed that, and it was signed recently. And that was by bipartisan support, both in the Senate and the House, and it allows us to listen to our caregivers in the white coats, and they tell us that that, has a, that is a uh, medication that has a purpose, and now West Virginia has an opportunity to use that. We have done a great deal for higher education. The governor is very proud of the, uh, the uh, adjustments that have been made that assist West Virginia University, Marshall University, and the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine in being able to have more flexibility and, and uh, opportunity so that they uh, are, are recognized. You know, all three have medical schools, all three have certain, certain size, certain sophistication. It recognizes that they have some uh, additional flexibility and we're very pleased that the presidents of those universities were so supportive with the governor in, in going forward in that on higher education. On tourism, we have a new tourism bill, which we think along with the SOS fund, the Save Our State Fund, will allow our tourism industry to blossom. It'll have different and more flexibilities that'll help us out when we go out and try to recruit people to come to West Virginia, 
I like to call it pure West Virginia. Come here, enjoy the place, spend your funds, hopefully stay, come back 10 or 12 times, retire here hopefully when you get, when you get to that particular age. To assist in that, we now have something that's been asked for for years. We have Sunday hunting on private property. Sunday hunting is there. We think that's gonna be a great tourism opportunity for us and take care of our own people. We also have a new state park lodge planned at Capon Resort. There was in the legislation and there's a $25 million lodge that has now gone from uh, an idea to headed to the drawing boards. And we're also working on the uh, Sunday trout stockings. Now I'm not much of a trout fisherman, but if you're a trout person, you're gonna like that more than you like Sunday hunting because that's gonna take, take, uh, give you other opportunities. What about government waste? Well, so far I think we've found 334 state vehicles, which is something. I think the unsung history behind that is many of those vehicles were supporting individuals who had other opportunities. So it's not just a matter of the vehicles, but it's a matter of trying to, to uh, uh, better manage our workforce and to continue to look for ways that we can streamline the supplying of services, but in the most cost efficient way. We've had some public safety successes that we're really proud to share. We have put in measures that are keeping illicit drugs out of our prisons and jails. You wouldn't think that'd be a problem, but when people soak writing paper in, in illicit products and mail it to an inmate, and suddenly that becomes a product they can uh, use internally, I mean, it, they can digest it and chew it up and get an inappropriate uh, use of it, uh, we've been able to stem that through the leadership of our folks in DMAPS. We've also uh, implemented, again, through the, uh, our mental health system, some intervention trainings to help us in intervention trainings behaviorally in correction facilities. A lot of those folks join us after a very, uh, very difficult life and getting convicted and their drug issues and their behavioral health issues don't go away when they come to the correctional facilities. We've worked hard to make those jails safer for our workers and also for the inmates themselves. Uh, governors looked after the veterans. I don't know if you ever had a chance to look at the Veterans Cemetery. It was not something we were proud of. Now the Don C. Kennard Cemetery has been taken care of and, and is in much better shape. And in going with our tourism efforts, the governor has pushed forward the effort to eliminate state income tax on veterans. So if you're a veteran and you are here, you're going to get some relief as that legislation moves forward. And if you're a veteran that's not here, hopefully our tourism folks will bring you here. You'll like what you see. You'll retire here and you'll spend your veterans' non-tax money here in West Virginia. And one that the governor is very, very proud of, it's been many years in the making, is combating poverty. He signed legislation to create this pilot program, which is the West Side Re West Side Revival Comprehensive Community Development Initiative. It's a lot of words. What does that do? It sets up an opportunity uh, here in West Side as our main pilot project to access and utilize all sorts of federal funding, whether it be HUD funding, block grant, I'm sorry, community funding or other funding through one vehicle of the folks in the community who can reach out to those various agencies and be the clearinghouse to bring in both the resources and the successes that are necessary. So in 100 days, Besides creating jobs, revamping public education, at least from a leadership perspective, taking the first swipe at fighting the drug epidemic, ensuring that we now have at least, not enough, at least have $400 million worth of money to commit to the roads. We need $2.4 billion. There's still some things we've got to do, but we've got that in place. Bringing West Virginia to the medical 21st century with medical cannabis and doing what we've done in tourism and the protection of higher education, we're feeling like we still got a lot to do, but we're very proud of what accomplished in 100 days, and certainly it's not a birthday present. And I will also tell you, the reason I came out to tell you this is because our governor doesn't feel it is his job to say what he did well. So it's our job to let you all know what the governor did well. It is not in his nature to come out here and say, look at me, look at me, we've done something good. But it, I think it's important that you all communicate to the folks that you, you provide information to that, that your governor has not been sitting around for 100 days with uh, worrying about how to do. He's got a plan, he's implementing the plan, and he's leading forward. And now to get me out of here, let me lead forward with the governor. I think we have coming right behind us the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Welcome, governor, and happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, has he not talked long enough? Oh. Well, I'm going to come around here and sit down and talk with you a few minutes. And uh, 
Oh, hope everybody's doing good. I understand that uh, Nick's been talking to you about 100 days, and the only thing I would say about that is just this, is, you know, when you think about, you know, I said to my wife last night or some friends that were over at our house, I said, you know, to think, well, you're going to be our governor, and you're going to be here 100 days, and surely, hopefully, a whole lot longer than that. But the 100 days has gone by just like that. And we've been busy, and there's a lot of good that we think we're accomplishing, and there's a lot more to accomplish. Now, let me say this, that uh, I hope we're right on the cusp of something that I truly believe is amazing. And that is, I think we're on a pathway to pass a budget that is, is going to be really special. I, I'm announcing today that we're going to call everybody back a week from tomorrow. So everybody will be coming back a week from Thursday morning. And, uh, and I can tell you there's been a lot of dialogue go on between the House, the Senate, myself, the Dems, the Republicans on both sides. And, uh, and, and I do really believe that we're, we're on the verge of, of doing something that I think is if we can get everyone to just buy in, it could be a real bipartisan effort in which all of us should be really proud. I'd like to just show you just this, or maybe I can just sit here and talk with you and just, and, and that'll be easier. But if you could just imagine the budget that was presented to me, and let's just use an, do an 80,000 foot flyby. The budget in which we had would have devastated higher ed. It would have cut K through 12 and really hurt. We would have literally killed thousands of people as we walked away from them with DHHR cuts. We would have walked away from really substantial, substantial federal matching dollars in DHHR. We would have walked away from a teacher's pay raise. We would have walked away from our vets. We would have walked away from marketing our state with tourism dollars. Now, in addition to that, if that's not bad enough for you, we wouldn't have had anything in there as far as the tiering of helping our coal companies or our gas companies when things are bad and really helping us when things are really good. And if that isn't bad enough, we were throwing away 48,000 road jobs. 48,000 jobs, throwing them away. We were throwing away the ability for you to go on our turnpike or our toll roads, whichever they may be, for $8 and drive for free, we were throwing away the ability to fix the potholes in the existing roads, and we were also draining $90 more million dollars out of our rainy day fund. We've already been downgraded. We would be downgraded even more. Now, I've said it and said it and said it. If we had done that, what would the plan have been? Think about it. Think about what I just said. If we had done everything that I just said, plus the fact, you know, sprinkle in, you know, cut the state police, get rid of the Women's Commission, all those things, if we had done those, the $64 question is, what is the plan? You see, 
what is our job here? Our job here is not to just balance the budget. I'll tell you how you can balance the budget. I mean, I can balance the budget in 10 seconds. You know, we could, we can do something as absurd as, well, let's just don't have school in West Virginia. You know, and if that's not crazy enough, let's just, let's just eliminate all of our rainy day fund and we'll just balance the budget for this year. But you see, we have a bigger job than that, don't we? And our jobs as legislators are to give us a pathway to get out of our problems and to get to solutions and to get to prosperity. Tell me this, we've got a terrible drug epidemic. What if we had done what was proposed? What would we do to combat that? Well, we'd do nothing. In other words, what was proposed to me was really, really catastrophic. Now, here's where I think we're going to end up. I think we're going to end up that I'm going to have to put in some modest additional cuts to my programs. I think we're going to probably end up with a 1% increase in consumer sales tax. I think we'll have a very, very, very modest business type tax, whether it be net corporate income, you know, it be, you know, everybody's worried about this cat tax, which I truly believe would be by far the best and the simplest and the easiest. But they seem like, you know, that I'm, I'm really interested in only in one thing. I just want the businesses to participate. I don't really care how, whether it's net corporate income or gross margin or, or CAD or whatever it may be. I don't care. I just think we've all got to pull the rope together. Now, I think from the standpoint of anything beyond that, on my end, there isn't much beyond that. On the other hand, I think the four and a half cents and the, t and, and, and the, the tolls on our, on, our, on our turnpike and the DMV fees, I think all that, can, all that will be back at play and we'll get our road jobs. I think as far as the teacher's pay raise, I've, I've stood steadfast on that. As far as the veterans, I've stood steadfast on that. But here's where it really goes a little bit a little bit even better, and that is this. I think there'll be the ability to genuinely lower our state income tax to the point of probably really close to 20%. And the lowering of our lower bracket will be even more dramatic. Now, at the end of the day, There'll be a few things that we'll go up on and a few things that we'll go down on. Think about it. We may go up 1% in our consumer sales tax. We may, we may tax the super wealthy just a little teeny bit. We may, we, we may, <clears throat> we may do a, a modest, a very small increase to our businesses. On the other side, we may very well be able to drop our state income tax by as much as 20%. In addition to that, we may be able to lower our severance tax to our coal companies when things are bad and raise them for all of us when things are good. We may very well be able to let our people go on our turnpikes and everything for $8. And in addition to that, we'll be able to exempt our vets from their you know, our state income tax. If we can pull that off, just think about it. Just think about it. We'll be able to do that without cutting into higher ed, without cuts to DHHR, without cutting into K through 12, without cutting our state police, without eliminating our women's commission. I mean, how good could good possibly be? 
And at the end of the day, I would challenge any legislator, any of them, to just think about it. And then I'll be quiet. Just think about it. If you would vote no for this, what are you voting yes for? Are you voting yes to really cut our higher ed? Are you voting yes to really, really walking away from our weak and our disabled and DHHR? Are you, are you voting yes to walk away from our teachers' pay raise? Are you voting yes to walk away from tourism dollars to market our state? Are you voting yes to walk away from our vets? Are you, are you voting yes to walk away from our seniors and our kids that are autistic or whatever it may be? Are you voting yes to walk away from 48,000 road jobs? Are you voting yes from the standpoint that y'all may want to go on our turnpikes for free? Are you voting yes that you don't want our citizens to pay less than our state income tax? To me, to me, you know, a vote against this would be voting for all the bad things that I've already just said. I don't see how in the world any legislator, any legislator could walk away from this opportunity. The vote needs to be 34-0 and 100-0 and signed by me and us going down the road. Because at the end of the day, we will never have, never have this level of opportunity. And I'm not, t I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm just trying to tell you brass tax facts. One last time. If you vote against all the stuff, the goodness that I've proposed, you're voting for walking away from DHHR. You're voting for walking away from our teachers, our vets, our tourism, our higher ed, are losing 48,000 jobs on our roads and everything else under the sun. And if you're willing to do that, I would highly suggest that the only friend you may have, you may need to buy a dog. Because really and truly, you need to find a friend somewhere. Because in all honesty, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. In the most dire situation, and if we can pull it off, it will be an effort by a lot of really good people that have gone together to make real goodness happen on both sides of the aisle. And for that, I am really proud. So I hope we can do that. And, uh, and oh, sorry, yes, sir. I apologize. I have to put the governor back to work. We don't have time for questions because we have about 62 more bills to go through there. So we're going to let him chase out of here without questions for the governor, which is not his normal style. But I do want to give you one, two things he I forgot. He was supposed to tell you that before I came right. out here. We did, also, we did also for tourism, we supported the role to make the Amtrak run every day of the week because Phil Cavill standing back there. And we kept the state parks free. Yeah. All right. Y'all be good. Thank y'all.